everybody, welcome back to video number three in our series. We hope you've already watched video one and two, but if not, let's do a quick recap. Fred, tell them about what we've already discussed. All right, in video number one, we talked about the opportunities available to entertainers out there on big cruise ships uh, floating around the world and how those are coming back, how there's been a reset in the industry and uh, things are, are coming back after a, a big hiatus. With some small changes. Small yeah. changes. Yeah. But still, I think it's a remarkable time in history for entertainers to come back strong. Yes. And video number two was about being a guest entertainer, who that is, what that is, and how to be successful at it. We asked you to do sort of an inventory and if see how much material you have. A little bit of a checklist there. So uh, if you did not see video one and two, please go back and watch those videos. Right. And if this speaks to you, if it sounds like you, then you're in the right place. And there's an amazing world of opportunities in front of you. But, so let's talk about video number three. Okay, today we're going to do a couple things. We wanna take you into a cruise ship cabin and uh, we can show you around there with a little video we made maybe what, two, three years ago? Oh, I think it was longer than that. I look really young. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, so we'll take you there and then we will come back and discuss any changes there. And then we'll look at uh, four very important mistakes that people make that we don't wanna see you make. Yeah. So make sure and watch it all. All right, so here is us on board a cruise ship. Here in our cruise ship cabin, we thought we'd just invite you in. Um, to our pajama party. Yeah. We're in our jammies, my Spider-Man pajamas. <laughs> One of the biggest questions that we get asked quite, quite often is specifically about life at sea mm -hmm. and so that's one more of the reason one more reason excuse me that we decided to bring you into our cabin and make this a little bit more casual not as formal of a video so that you can see our porthole mm -hmm. and that we do get some sunlight um, the king size bed we're sitting on king size bed and we'll flip the camera around here and show you the rest of it in just a second actually um, let's do that right yeah, now about it just like any cruise passenger you're gonna be fed well right and we have literally no restrictions so we can go to all the shows all the all the amenities everything on board the ship swim in the pool go to the spa uh, use the gym all these things are at our disposal it's it's, it's yeah. like living in a resort all the time right? like screen TV DVD player things like that those are great you almost don't have to leave the game <laughs> and you have room service they'll bring you food right to your room yeah so it's for free <laughs> It's and crazy. someone else makes your bed. Yes, yeah, we never take out the garbage, we never <laughs> make the bed. It's amazing. Yeah, once you start working on cruise ships, you won't want to go you won't want to go back home. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, the only price you have to pay is you have to be nice to everybody that you meet. That's yeah. that's basically it. If yeah. you can pull that off, it's a great life. And if you're having a bad day, just stay in your cabin. Okay, that was actually kind of funny to see. <laughs> uh, a couple things there. Really that looked Pretty basic. I think the cabins we get now are a little more luxurious than that. Yeah, I think it depends. You know, be prepared for uh, cruise ship cabins that are sort of basic, like that one, which actually that cabin had quite a bit of floor space, which was nice because for like all of our suitcases, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, that it, that cabin in particular was what's called an officer's cabin. It was behind a crew door, but it was technically an officer's cabin. Lots of times you'll be in the passenger area, so you'll have an actual passenger cabin. Sometimes you can get a balcony. Um, we work on the luxury market a lot, and so um, the, the cabins can vary a lot, but that is really close to um, what you can expect when uh, when you're at it. You, you shouldn't settle for anything less. Right. Let's put it that and way. And there were some funny things in that video too. I think mo we, we, we like going back <laughs> DVD and players. Yeah, we like going back and showing you a little bit of this, not so we can compare how we've aged, but um, <laughs> but mostly because there's still a lot of really good content uh, that that we you know filmed back then, and it's a lot of it is the same. So so the 
premise of the job has not changed and all of the good things about it haven't changed and it, they've only gotten better. I think so they've we gotten wanna, better. So we want to go revisit those and then show you like, hey, you may not have a DVD player anymore because now you'll have digital downloads on your television, lots of movies and things loaded into those TVs a lot of the time. I mean, we still come across ships where we have DVD players. And some <laughs> ships, uh, you have basic internet already. Yeah. It's like just to do emails or your phone connecting right. is included. So for entertainers. So and with each passing year, things sort of, uh, you know, there's, there's always progress, right? So when we first started doing gigs on ships, you, internet was something where you bought a little card and you got... Uh, 20 minutes for $20 or something like right, that. Yeah. And now a lot of basic internet on cruises is actually included free. So you can check your email a lot of the time and not every ship, but there, by the time you are working on a ship, you never know how much further down in the uh, sort of technology progression you've gotten. So things are only getting better. Yeah. So I think that's all a plus. Let's talk yeah, about absolutely. mistakes that people made. And uh, just like then we were sitting in that room discussing that. Yeah, and I think falls to avoid. And these, I think, are all right on the money. There's still nothing has completely changed. Completely the same. So pay close attention. So let's go look at young Fred and Bobby talking about. <laughs> We're four, still young. <laughs> four mistakes people make. Here you go. Right now is a critical moment for you. I want to tell you about four mistakes that I see people make whenever they're approaching the cruise ship market. This might be in their marketing or in the strategies they use to get involved in cruise ships. Right? We oft yeah, we often see people who are trying to take a shortcut. Um, they just want a list of agencies and they want to pick up the phone and call an agent and that's they want to take the path of least resistance, you know, hope right. to get a job. But the truth is, we're going to talk about a couple of things that you absolutely have to do before you ever approach an agency or the cruise line. Um, these are imperative and the most important thing is your promo reel. Right. The number one mistake that I see is uh, has to do with your promo video. The video is the most important tool that you have when it comes to marketing yourself to cruise lines, and there are a lot of a uh, lot of mistakes. But right now, I want to tell you about one that's critical, and that is people are showing video of an act that doesn't look like it belongs on a cruise ship stage. In other words, uh, they're showing themselves working at a county fair or a bar mitzvah party, or a wedding uh, banquet, something like that, the booker, the entertainment director for the cruise line, is not going to look at that and feel confident that that particular act is going to fit on their cruise ship stage. Yeah, and there's a, you know, there's a reason for that. And it's, it's that we don't want to scare you away if your experience is that you've worked for theme parks every summer. You might have an excellent act that will transition onto a cruise ship. But what we're saying is that when you market to the cruise ship or you create your promo re reel for an agent that's going to then sell you uh, to the cruise line, what they need to see is that your act is big enough or that you're comfortable on a cruise ship stage because as we've discussed before, these are world-class theaters. They're some of the nicest theaters we've seen in the world. And just because they're at sea doesn't mean that they are not spectacular. You need to craft a commercial for yourself as though you already had that job. That's a perfect word, Fred, is a commercial. You want to sell yourself as if you were already a performer on the cruise ship. Right. Uh, there's an old expression that says, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it must be a duck. Right. Well, you want you, you must make it look like you already walk and talk the way that a cruise ship performer is. So that's exactly the same idea I want you to have in mind and that's our mistake number one, is don't send video that looks like you work everywhere else except a cruise ship stage. So how can you do that? Well, there's a lot of ways that you can do that, and we're going to delve into that uh, in great detail in Gigs on Ships. However... Because it's critical. It's very critical. It's one of the most important things, as we said. Um, I think mistake number two is somewhat related in that people show themselves being too many things. Uh, like they, they say, hey, we can entertain this type of audience and that kind of, and this kind and that kind. Well, and you've heard the, you know, that's another sort of term, jack of all trades, master, master of, of none. none. Mm -hmm. And so know what you do. Yes. And in, feature at least that. In this case, make sure it's a very clear message to the buyer that you do exactly what he is looking to buy. Make sense? Correct. Yeah. We've had a lot of people who have trouble figuring out exactly what they do. We've gotten a lot of questions that say, 
uh, I can juggle, I can also balloon twist, and I can tap dance, you know, uh, or something to that extent. And which one should I do, or would they like all of that? And I guess what we're saying here is the most important thing is to know who you are, know what your act is, and don't pitch too many things. All too often we see acts wanting the job so bad on a cruise ship that they're willing to just do everything. Right. You know, I'll tap dance, I'll sing, I'll juggle, uh, hey, I'm a one-man show band. We, you know, you need to have a defined act, right. and that's, that's what you do. Otherwise, they get confused. Right. That's not how a cruise ship operates. Right. They don't have one person doing everything. They have very specific roles. Jack of all trades, master of none, that probably is not going to work. This day and age, it's much easier and simpler to create promo that's targeted right to a specific audience. So, you want to make sure that it says, we do this act, and it's perfect for cruise ships, and stop right there. Don't try and make it match everything. Right, and we'll delve into that a little further in Gigs on Ships. Mistake number three, very important, is people try to go to every cruise ship agent there is in the world and market through them. And, as we said earlier, a lot of people just want, give me the list of agencies, because I'm going to pick up the phone and start calling everybody. And it's really a big mistake if you do that. Right. Um, you got to understand, a cruise ship agent is a very specifically connected person. They have relationships with all the entertainment directors of the cruise lines. And if you have s contacted several agents, and this agent calls up the cruise line and says, hey, I have a great new act, and they send the video over and said, take a look at it, and the um, entertainment buyer for the cruise line calls them back and says, I've already seen this act. They're represented by this other agency. Boy, there's hell to pay. Everybody gets very angry and upset at you because they want to have exclusivity. So it's very important that you uh, find an agent that you work with, have a good relationship with, but you only have that one agent. And that doesn't mean that you can't call every agency when you're looking for an agent. It also doesn't mean that you have to go through an agent. However, in this example, if you are going to have an agent represent you to the cruise lines, then what we're suggesting is that, sure, give a couple of them a call and say, I'd like to know a little bit more about your agency. I'm looking for res representation. And, you know, how do you operate? How many clients are you already handling? Um, what kind of treatment will I get if I'm represented by you? Things like that. And then get a feel for which agent, you know, you have good chemistry with. This is a very deep and complex issue, and we cover it very deeply in GOS, the course. Uh, number four, the mistake that I see happen, is that people just give up too soon. They make a couple phone calls, they uh, put together a video and send it out, and nothing happens. And they feel discouraged, and they give up the entire game. Um, the truth is, people are being hired on cruise ships, uh, they are trying new acts, but the cruise lines will go with a proven act before a brand new one. That's just the nature of the beast because they have a lot of people that are watching the show and grading the show through the rating system that we talk about in other places. And, but, and also, not just the cruise lines who want proven acts, the agents also have clients that they represent, or acts, we'll call them acts like ourselves, that they represent, so they want to make sure that they're getting their current roster of acts uh, jobs mm -hmm. before anybody that they take on that's new. But you should also understand that there's also constant turnover. There are people retiring from the cruise industry. They have, maybe they have a brand new baby at home and they don't want to go out anymore. Uh, they're just transitioning into a different career fit career field, um, there's constant turnover in this industry, so there's always room for new people. Right. So um, you have to be persistent. That's part of the game. And again, a lot of facets to that, but we will talk about that in depth in the overall course. Yeah, but we do want to make sure that you understand giving up too soon is a bad idea. All right, there was our, our step back in time, which was kind of fun. But I think all of those things are exactly valid. I think yes. that we're right on point, and that's why we showed them to you. Now we want to invite you to our video number four, which um, a couple of things. If you have any questions about anything 
regarding the cruise industry or anything we've talked about, go ahead and drop a comment below and let us know what your questions are. Um, it's probably better to do it here as a comment because it's public and other people may say, oh yeah, I had that question. Uh, and we may not get to them any other way. And I think we're going to try and do our last video, video number four, as a live event. So do make sure that you are on our mailing list, that you're signed up and registered for that. That way uh, you don't miss that. And you can either check back here or on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash gigs on ships. And we'll have notifications there as well. Anything to add, Miss Bobby? Uh, I will just add that, um, you know, the industry is coming back slowly, but surely uh, every week new cruises are added to, you know, the, the ocean, I should say new ships are rolling out. Um, there are a lot of them in the test cruise phase right now. We've spoken to different agents that are talking about, um, you know, them really needing acts, as we discussed in video one, for whatever reason that um, the, the well source of entertainment that they had to pull from is a lot smaller now for a myriad of reasons. And so uh, this may be a very good time for you to break into the industry. Um, and you don't want to try to do that without first gaining the knowledge that we have to offer. Uh, and, you know, we, we sort of act as a bit of coaches and mentors. And um, we hope that the information that you've gotten from the first three videos is very valuable to you. And we hope you'll tune in for video four so that we can try to answer more questions um, and, that and you really, might have. And really show you how to unlock this opportunity in a big, big way. Yeah. It could really change your life for the There's better. a lot of information. It's not as simple as running after an agency and trying to submit a, a video. So really take that. We aren't, we aren't saying that um, for any other reason than it's true. We wanna give you the proper tools that you need to approach the cruise lines and um and put mm. your best face forward <laughs> perfect well okay until we see you next time once again i'm fred becker and bobby. bobby and uh bon voyage bon voyage That's you say voyage i'm trying to say it with like a french accent yeah but it sounds like bon you know, voyage. it sounds like he doesn't know how to I say don't. it yeah well it's like bon voyage bon voyage yeah but that's yeah bon voyage that sounded terrible. Terrible. Anyway.